This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, I'm Sabrina Brown. Thank you for joining us. Topping the news tonight, the Minister of Education, the Honorable Jerome Fitzgerald, is giving his assessment of recent exam results in the country. Minister Fitzgerald says hundreds of students in the public and private schools performed exceptionally well. In this report, Italia Hall focuses on results in the Northern Bahamas. English language, biology, mathematics, and religious studies continue to remain the subjects of choice for the vast majority of candidates for the national examinations. In the country, approximately 11,703 candidates were registered to sit examinations for the 11 subjects that were offered. For the BJC, 64% of students had passing grades of A through D and 36% from E and below. For the BGCSE examination, 71% of the students had grades which were A through D and 29% grade E and below. The Minister of Education, the Honorable Jerome Fitzgerald, says he is pleased with the GLAT, BJC and BGCSE results in the Northern Bahamas. I spoke with the principals in, I think it was late May, and commended all of the uh, principals uh, for the job that they're doing. We continue to be very excited about um, how Grand Bahama in particular has bought into the intervention strategies that we've introduced um, and they have embraced them. Fitzgerald says Grand Bahama has always led the way in technical and vocational training. The senior um, educators here really assisted us in mapping out um, our career paths which are now a requirement for the high school diploma and so a lot of what we have instituted throughout the country really has its genesis and what was happening in Grand Bahama uh, with regard to technical and vocational education at the senior high school level. He says there are a lot of dedicated educators in the northern region and he has this message for parents. I want to encourage them to continue to be actively involved um, in their children's educational career because that is the uh, uh, key to their success. I just want to continue them to be engaged with their schools. The theme this year is educating students to create lifelong learners. The minister says he hopes this theme will inspire students to embrace opportunities. What we wanted to do is really begin to put in a student's uh, mindset that education doesn't end at high school um, and that in fact that there is uh, tertiary education. We want, to consider, we want to encourage them to go beyond that and furthermore even when they finish that, even for the teachers, they continue to upgrade their training, even principals. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Italia Hall. Members of the Bahamas Union of Teachers will head back to the polls next week for the second time this year. You may recall that in June of this year, an election was held for members of the teachers' union, but not all positions were on the ballot. Area Vice President on Grand Bahama, Quinton LaRota, says in the September 20th elections, teachers will vote for the positions of president, treasurer, and trustee. Individuals who were denied the opportunity to be on the ballot by the candidates' committee, they appeal to another committee, the elections commission, they also denied them the appeal to the AG, to, to the appeals c committee. Uh, that c committee met, they deliberated, and they concurred with the committee's prior. So three um, independent committees in the BUT have denied the candidacy of Belinda Wilson, Laurie Knowles, and Ms. Papintad Monroe. We have a, a, an election, so the ballots are prepared. Um, we are candidates for president, uh, Zane Lightborn and Jackie Kinsey. Uh, the, the trustees is Victoria Willis of Grand Bahama, Margaret Albury and Venetia Simmons of New Providence. And for your treasurer, so far, there's only one approved candidate, Therese Conliffe. BUT Executive Joan Knowles Turnquest is currently serving in the capacity of president. Also from education, a local technical institute is working hard to prepare young men in particular for the job market through an intervention program. President at Total Educational Center, Fred Delancey, says in their efforts to find jobs for displaced young men, they have discovered that many of them are unemployable. All the companies we deal with require that these fellows, they have clean police record. And a lot of our guys don't and they become unemployable. So the question in our mind is, if these fellows are unemployable, 
um, what do we what, what do we expect them to do basically they are families and I'm not making any excuses for them so they resort to stealing which in my opinion is a cardinal sin taking someone else's possession he says that's why TEC is focused on establishing programs that will give those who fall in this category a second chance we believe that we could stand in the gap with some of these guys we are starting a program that will allow these young men to receive classes in math and English, mostly workplace communication, and then they receive technical training two days a week. But apart from that, um, the fact that they are unemployable simply tells me that we now need to expose them to some business um, um, ideas, bus business activities. And that means that every week they're going to join our present um, youth and business program where them and their families will be mandatory for them and their families to basically participate in a business venture together. We will provide the resources to get the business started. But that is not the only challenge the Technical Institute is facing when it comes to putting young men to work. Marijuana, cocaine is a no-no in the industrial arena, basically. And so all of our people, before we send them to work, we have to test them. And the sad thing about it is, at least 30 to 40 percent of the persons we sent to be tested come back positive. So they are not employable. And if young people can just basically, you know, just put aside marijuana, put aside cocaine for a while, six months, seven months to catch themselves, you know, so that they can begin um, um, a career. Because they will not be employed. And I repeat, they will not be employed if they on marijuana or cocaine. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. The plan to revitalize the once thriving International Bazaar is moving forward. The popular shopping center has deteriorated over the years, but there is a move afoot to turn the situation around. Megan Shepard has an update tonight. The dream is now becoming a reality as talks are now turning into action. Vice Chair of the Restore Grants Bahama Organization, Rashima Ingram, says that phase one of the revitalization of the bazaar is now underway. This phase involves soliciting volunteers and corporate sponsors to come on board and help bring life back to the bazaar as well as making it a safer place. We've been very lucky to have a mutual agreement with the Grand Bahama Power Company to help with phase one and um, they're fully on board with this they support this project they believe in what could be at the International Bazaar and we're also soliciting other corporate organizations to be on board with this. Chairman C. McMahon Campbell says that phase two, the cleanup stage, is equally as important. For years, the entire island has cried out for something to be done at the former shopping mecca. Campbell is urging companies, civic organizations, and all individuals to come together and assist in the task of restoring the International Bazaar. So what we're looking at now is offering to volunteers and corporate Bahamas more flexible hours for the cleanup campaign to take place. Um, we know that most of the concerns were if we do do volunteerism, do we only do it on the weekends? And I think daylight saving time is approaching very quickly. So you're looking at basically until 6, 6, 6 5 p.m. So hopefully now with phase one being in full effect, um, we have more flexible hours for the cleanup campaign. He notes that all work is being done in conjunction with the union. We're talking about the portion that is owned by the hotel union, which is most what persons would know as the Tory gate go through the entrance. You make a left by, I think, Japanese steakhouse in the different, different countries, whether it be Africa, Spain, whatever. And those are the parts that are owned by the hotel union, which is a roughly about 45% of the original international bazaar. Ingram says she hopes this project will be done just in time to bring some Christmas cheer to the island. We're looking at phase one to be a six-week span. We're looking from the end of this month or the beginning of, of October to just before Christmas. So, you know, we'll bring in that whole Christmas spirit of what we knew Freeport to be in terms mm -hmm. of that jolly good old season. All interested persons can sign up for the cleanup at www.restoregrandbahama.org. Megan Shepard, CNS Network News. 47 Cuban migrants brought to Grand Bahama today by a U.S. Coast Guard vessel. 
The 41 males, including a child and six females, were intercepted at sea in the Kisau Bank area in three separate vessels over the past two days. The migrants say they left Cuba several days ago, destined for the United States. They were handed over to local authorities today and will be transferred to the detention center in New Providence to be repatriated. Meantime, U.S. Coast Guard officials say another 20 Cuban migrants were intercepted near the Kisau Bank late yesterday. That group is expected to be brought to Grand Bahama and will be handed over to immigration officers. Stay with us as more news after this.